Nick Benito. First question this afternoon will go to Eric Bailey and Tulsa World. Eric. Hey, Nick, it's good to see you again, man. Good to see you too. I wanted to ask you, what is some of the most important advice that you have received in, in regards to staying grounded? And, and how important is it to realize that advice when you're getting so many preseason accolades thrown your way? You think you can turn it up a little more? I'm sorry, you repeat the question? Yeah, no problem, no problem. Hey, you know, I was just wondering, what is some of the most important advice that you have received in regards to staying grounded and how important is it for you to realize that advice when you're getting so many preseason accolades this year? Um, it's good, you know, when you have, you know, good, good, uh, good coaches around you. Uh, you know, my, my dad, you know, he talks to me a lot. You know, he just wants me to stay with that same hunger, you know, when I didn't have all those accolades. Because, you know, I remember I was really hungry. You know, I got mad. I didn't see a lot of my name on those watch lists. So, you know, I feel like I, I just got to carry it the same way as it is now. You know, all that stuff doesn't matter. You know, at the end of the day, you know, we're just... I got to do my job and, you know, help, you know, do the things I need to do to help this team win. So. Nick, thanks a bunch. Have a good week. No problem. Austin Kurtwright, who are you dealing? Hey, Nick. Uh, last week when we talked to Brian Asamo, he sort of brought up, uh, you know, how important it was to play elite level defense this season. You know, just based on what we've heard, you know, how, how important is that for the rest of the defense heading into this season with, you know, the expectations that you guys have? Um, it's really good because, you know, I feel like, you know, over the time, you know, since I've been here, at least, you know, we've made strides since Coach Grinch has stepped through that door. So, I mean, it wouldn't make any sense to just try to go back. You know, we, it's only, I feel like we can only go up from here. And, you know, I feel like so far, you know, we, we've done a good job of that, but, you know, we still have a long way to go to, to where we can call ourselves elite. So, you know, I feel like we just got to keep working. Jenny Carlson, the Oklahoma. Hey, Nick, you uh, mentioned your dad a second ago. Um, it struck me as you were talking about him that I don't know that we've ever heard you talk much about dad, mom, uh, family influences. Can you just maybe talk a little bit about your, your dad and just how he's influenced you and, and continues to now? Now, nah, my dad really has a big impact on my life. Like he's he's always, you know, been hard on me, you know, whether it was in basketball and football, you know, just because, you know, he knew, you know, that, you know, when the potential that I had in me and, you know, just, you know, how bad I, I love the game and how bad I wanted it. So he wouldn't settle for anything less than, you know, 100 percent. So, you know, him and my mom, you know, they're always going to do a good job of just trying to, you know, you know, motivate me, you know, keep me grounded and, you know, just, you know, and I, and I try to repay them by playing hard for them and and doing the same. So. I was actually going to ask you sort of a question that along these lines a little bit, you're a guy that always has struck me as being pretty, uh, pretty even keel. Um, you know, you don't, you don't seem too, uh, too high, too low, pretty mature in that way. Has that been something that does that come from your folks? Is that, is that kind of just how you're wired? What, what do you sort of chalk that up to that, that sort of even demeanor in your personality? Yeah, I probably get it from more of my dad's side because he he's more of a more of a grounded person. Don't really you know talk too much. You know, he's just kind of to himself. As for my mom, she can talk and she can talk all day to anybody. So just <laughs> meet a stranger and she'll just talk all day to them. But yeah, I probably say I get it from my dad for sure. Thanks, Nick. No problem. John Hoover, SI Sears. Hey, Nick. Appreciate your time today, man. Um, no you mentioned a minute ago about the strides you've made since Coach Grinch walked through the door. Can you kind of give us some examples of what, when he first got there, the learning curve was like? Uh, you you know, it's it's a complex defense, but it's, it requires some simplicity as well. You guys are trying to learn, like drinking through a fire hose, I'm sure. But now contrast that to two years later, you're going into his third camp. It's like everything is second nature to you guys now? Can you kind of contrast those two camps? Oh, most definitely. And, you know, I feel like I can speak for a lot of guys in the defense, like a Pat Fields, DeLarian Turner, uh, Brian Osamo, Deshaun White. It's a lot of guys that have been in the system for three years now since he's been through that door. And, you know, I feel like now it's just, you know, a matter of, you know, okay, you know, we know it. Now we got to help the young guys know it. Uh, specifically in my group, like a Clayton Smith or or Brendan Walker or Stripling, you know, he, he just moved to a, the rush linebacker. So he's still trying to learn a couple of things. So it's really just, you know, as older guys, we got to take it upon ourselves to, to bring the young guys along and, and make sure they know the defense just as well as we do. And when it, when it comes to speed D, I assume that 
you don't have to process anything. You can play faster. Can you describe that process as well? Oh, most definitely. And, uh, you know, Coach Grinch, he's, he's going he's gonna to run calls and, and, and make sure we know him throughout the week during practice. He's going to rep it, rep it. And, you know, I, it's never too complicated. You know, he's going to give us a game plan. And, and once we know it, you know, and we see everything in practice, you know, it, it just gets easier for us in the field. So I, you know, I definitely think Coach Grinch does a great job of repping it during practice. Thanks, Nick. Appreciate it. James Hale, you know, Nick, uh, Alex Grinch has said your position is such an important position that Lincoln has doubled down on it because this defense really needs a great pass rusher and it comes from that spot a lot. So they praised you and talked about you. But they talked about that you get to rest a little bit because the position is so deep. Could you talk about this group of pass rushers that you have and you know how important it is that you have a group and not just one guy, even though you're really good, it's better to have a group. Um, I just feel like it's like that really with any position. If you have depth, it's just a long day for the offense because you know, you, if there's no lineman, it's scary when you can take one guy out and you can bring in another guy who's just as good, even better at you know, at specific areas. And you know, that's just a tough time for our offense. And you know, I just feel like it, it benefits us because whenever we're on the field, we're going to be 100%. And if we're not, we can get the next guy in and there's no drop off. So, you know, I feel like it's a real good benefit, you know, to have on the defense. Can you talk about the other guys in your room and what you think about them at this point? Um, I feel like all of them have, are all athletic. You know, I mean, they're guys that can, you know, rush the passer, you know, like, you know, Striplin and uh, Clayton Smith. And, you know, they can bring, you know, a, a dynamic and to where they can play the run. And then they also can drop back, you know, another guy, Brendan Walker, he's been he's been doing really well, too. So. And I just feel like all those guys in that room, they can really, you know, jack of all trades. You can ask them to rush the passer, drop back in coverage, play the run. Hey, thanks, Nick. Have a great. No problem. Here in Tulsa World. Mr. Benito, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm good, man. Very good. Um, in Arlington, you and Coach Riley both talked pretty openly about uh, where you were three years ago and um, just the need to sort of get, get things right and for you to you know, adjust some things on and off the field, for you to contribute, everyone goes through that. That's, that's not atypical for a college dude, but, but everyone has different experiences. What, describe where you were three years ago, just in, in, in your words. I mean, just, just how thin was the ice that, that Lincoln said you were on? Um, I'll probably say, you know, it was for sure me, for, first of all. And then it was just me just being in my own head, you know, not just being the quiet guy, not really, you know, trying to express, you know, what was going on, you know, me, my personal life at the time. So, you know, I, I it would just feel like it was more like internal for me and just me got, having to figure stuff out. Did you almost, did, was, was, was there a point you had to decide whether you were going to stick it out at, at OU? Oh, no, I always knew this was a place for me. It was nothing ever about OU. It was just more about me and myself and, and personal things that were in my life that were going on, so. Very cool. All right, I appreciate it. No problem. Parker Thune, are you yeah, Nick, good to see you again, man. Hey, curious, you and Isaiah Thomas each had eight plus sacks last year. Jalen Redmond led the team in sacks in 2019. And Perrion Winfrey looks like he's going to be one of the biggest freaks in college football on the defensive line. Do you think do you think it's an unrealistic expectation that you guys might have the most fearsome defensive line in college football this year? Oh, not at all. And uh, I feel like we take pride in that. You know, every time we step on the field, you know, during during fall camp, during any game, you know, we always going to have that mentality because, you know, I feel like we since we've gotten on campus, we've gotten better every day. And, you know, last year we started to prove like, OK, like we can really be like one of the best D lines in college football. And now the expectation is this year that we got to be dominant. So you know, there's there's no uh, I don't think you're wrong in saying that. So but we definitely got to keep working at being that and we got to go prove it on the field this year. So appreciate it, Nick. No. It looks like last one from Cliff Brunt from AP. Yeah, hey, what's going on? What's up? Thank you know much. Hey, man, you talked about knowing the system better um, from a few years ago. But what I want to know is you talked about that confidence that you guys have. Can you uh, describe a little bit about the difference in the mentality of the guys now having had a couple of years of success on defense and your vibe in the camp versus maybe a few years back? Uh, a few years back, I would say it was just like, you know, Coach Grinch is just saying all these things and we're just like, okay, like we got to do this. And, you know, I feel like it really didn't start clicking until those things actually started happening. Like 
once people started running to the ball, like we've seen it can work. Once people, once we start getting takeaways, we see it equals to victory. And, you know, just anything, a lot of those, a lot of those things that he preaches, you know, once we started doing it, it all started coming into fruition and we started believing it and trusting in what he's saying. So, you know, I feel like once we started doing that, you know, that's when we started, you know, really, you know, hitting our stride as a defense. Appreciate it. Okay, there any more questions for Nick? Aaron, one, one more. Sure. Uh, hey, one one follow up, Nick. Are you all these preseason All American accolades you're getting uh, almost almost tally up to the same number that, that Spencer is on offense? I don't know if if you think that the defense needs a sort of a linchpin like that to succeed, but are, are you willing to accept that role if it comes your way, and or how willing would you be? Oh, I'll be most definitely be accepting of that. Um, and, you know, it's everything that, you know, that I've asked for, you know, especially when, you know, playing how I did last year and it's to be expected. So, you know, I definitely won't shy away from it. And I feel like there's other guys, you know, along on the defense that can hold up to that standard as well. So, you know, I feel like, you know, you can point to a lot of guys in the defense that can uphold, you know, to what you're talking about. So but I feel like I definitely can for sure. Does any of the attention surprise you at all that you're getting this much, this much notoriety? Uh, yeah, just because, you know, I feel like, you know, even though I did have a good year last year, it, it wasn't to, you know, my standard and, and what I think I can do, because I still have a lot to, to, to grow in my game. But, you know, it's definitely honoring for sure.